Good afternoon. Welcome to UC News. I'm Peyton Marshall. And I'm Connor Sweeney. Coming up on UC News, are more students becoming the victims of theft? And the government shutdown may seem like it's far away from campus, but it's hitting students right here. Also, success on the basketball court, sports news is coming up, and much more. But we start with the name you hear a lot on campus, McMicken Hall, the McMicken College of Arts and Sciences. The McMicken name has been a part of UC its entire history, but now, Kennedy Metcalf tells us some students think it should go away. McMicken Hall sits right in the center of UC's West Campus. The Liberal Arts College takes its name from Charles McMicken, a slave owner who built the college for whites only. Now, some people are arguing to remove his name because of his controversial past. I think the name does more hurt than it does help for the university and our students and local community. Sina Habstil Salase is the undergraduate student body president. She sees this controversy as a learning opportunity. I think as a place for higher education, we uh, have the opportunity to really spearhead what progressive inclusion looks like um, and what it means to create an environment and ecosystem at our university that stands by its morals of diversity and inclusion. But some students believe the decision to remove McMicken's name may not be as simple as it seems. I was on the fence when I was reading the article. ANS student Madeline Heil thinks there should be consistency on both sides of the argument. If this is what, like, what we're going to do, then I think like, it needs to be very uniform and you need to go and like, look at every single hall. So I don't agree, but I see where they're coming from, if that makes any sense. Despite the difference in opinion, both sides agree that UC's campus should be a safe and inclusive environment for all, current and future Bearcats to come. With UC News, I'm Kennedy Metcalf. Names may change, but one thing you can't control, this winter weather. It's been a bear this year. Now, a licensed driving school based near Cleveland is offering lessons here on how to drive on snow and ice. Drive Team teaches a four-hour clinic on winter driving skills like how to avoid skids and accidents and how to brake when you hit bad road conditions. The goal of the class is to let you stay in control behind the wheel. A new housing community where Deaconess Hospital used to sit is in the final stages of development. Real estate developer Trintas Ventures bought the almost six-acre plot next to the University of Cincinnati in 2017, then immediately broke ground on what they're calling the Deacon. Students at UC have met this project with mixed emotions. They're looking forward to new housing opportunities, but sad to lose affordable parking in the old hospital's garage. Phase one of the $100 million project will build 351 apartments that should be ready for students this August. I'm excited about that. I think a lot of people will be upset about parking. There really isn't enough to go around now. And the parking is so expensive right now. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of disappointing to lose one of our little spots that we actually do have somewhat affordable parking with. Oh well. But parking isn't our biggest issue right now. Coming up, trouble in Washington, D.C. causes problems across the river right here in the tri-state. And some students are worried about their belongings on and near campus. Find out why after the break. Welcome back to UC News. It's the worst thing you can imagine. You walk in your apartment and realize someone broke in? Abby Dye tells us it's happening more and more often at UC. I was, I was shaking, like I was just overcome with fear. Student Ian Norhaus was home one morning when a burglar entered his house. And I went downstairs and this guy's walking out with my roommate's laptop. Ian isn't alone. It happened to Peter Colvin too. Someone had entered our house unbeknownst to me or any of the other brothers and uh, robbed us and then left. All the devices that were taken plus the other property, I would say that probably anywhere between um, $800 to $1,000 was taken from our house. What happened to Ian and Peter is happening to more students on and off campus. UC's annual safety report shows the number of burglaries rose 62 percent between 2015 and 2017. So far this year, records show a whopping 25 thefts. That's a 66% increase from this time last year. UC crime analyst Michael Zadar says theft is extremely common, yet easily preventable. If you have something stolen from you, definitely report it to the police. But again, just use common sense. Don't, don't leave things out in, in the open and exposed um, where someone can see it and take it. It's not hard to take these simple precautions. 
Don't leave electronics, such as laptops, out in the open. Instead, hide them. That alone can help you avoid becoming part of the statistics. We didn't lock the door, obviously, at all, so now we do. Using some of that common sense to avoid becoming a victim again. Abby Dye for UC News. Welcome back to UC News. It's the worst thing you can imagine. You walk in your apartment and realize someone broke in? Abby Dye tells us it's happening more and more often at UC. Thefts aren't the only crime to worry UC students. Several recent murders in Over the Rhine have made students wonder about the safety of their neighborhood just up the hill. But a report by the Inquirer says the number of shootings and murders in the city actually has dropped 18% since 2017. Police are patrolling to keep those numbers from going back up. Safety is also on the minds of Covington Catholic High School students and their parents. Covington Catholic is closed today after videos of a confrontation during the student's trip to Washington, D.C. went viral, leading to threats against the school and its students. Protesters who think the students were rude to a Native American and those who think the students did nothing wrong both lined up with signs outside of the Covington Catholic Diocese. Jack Raslich is a UC graduate student studying Native American history. He's upset about the videos. This is incredible. This is the worst possible combination of people to be near each other. Covington Catholic student Nick Sandman says he's getting death threats after he stood front and center in the videos. And it's polarizing and it will get people to interact with your story. I think really pushed it into a place of like highly debated contention. Covington Catholic's principal says he'll reopen the school when police say it's safe. Some of the students at the rally say they were just yelling sports cheers and meant no disrespect. I can see how a high school student can make that mistake, but I guess there's a time and place for everything. And Exactly, and at the end of the day, it's high school students we're talking about. I don't know if it's really worth death threats to a high school student. I mean, can you imagine if when we were in high school, if everything was videotaped mm -hmm. for us? I may have had that coming. My point exactly. <laughs> well, those aren't the only cheers. We have men's basketball team right now, and they are on a hot streak. Reagan Yachman will have the story and more after this break. Yeah, it was uh, that was a close game last night, but uh, I'm glad they pulled through. Yeah, did you catch it, Peyton? I did. I catch the highlights. I caught the highlights okay. last night, but uh, th this winning streak really has to be good confidence into our students about yes. this year's season. Yes, it's a good one. I highly suggest making it out for more games, guys. We need to. We can do that. <laughs> well, the men's basketball team is on a seven-game winning streak after beating Southern Methodist University Saturday. The Bearcats outpaced the Mustangs 73-68. to The win puts the team in a first-place tie in the American Athletic Conference. The Bearcats take on Memphis next week. A UC dance team is stepping up their game this season. I sat down with one of the members of UC Duduk to find out what they're all about. Madeline Brown is a senior at UC preparing to graduate this spring. With graduation comes job preparation and the stress of applying for jobs. UC College Conservatory of Music promised Brown before she came that they would set her up well for her future. Now Brown and other students say that still hasn't happened four years later. They made it seem like they were going to do everything they could to set us up with a company and that has just not been happening and if anything it's you know they're doing things detrimental to us finding a job. Lydia Hubacher is also in her last semester at UC. Hubacher says that she feels cheated because her non-dance major peers are receiving job offers because they are better funded. Majors such as musical theater and acting are given showcases and better reels to sell themselves. The percentage of dance majors who graduate without a job is really high and it's really sad um, because we don't have that sort of thing. Both Brown and Hubacher say that the Tapas program is very underfunded and can be blamed for a lot in their major. The dance program is currently looking for a new director of dance. No word on when they will have a replacement. Reagan Yocum, Bearcast News. UC football fans are celebrating a successful season and looking forward to another one next year with Coach Luke Fickle. 
Skylar Hizar and other fans are proud of what Fickle has done with the team. It feels like a really significant shift. Other schools noticed this season too. Coach Fickle caught many people's attention. West Virginia University even offered him a coaching position to helm the Mountaineers. Fickle said no, he chose to stay here with his team to continue filling the stadium. We're kind of like a, a smaller school, not a Power 5 conference. So as the field rests during this offseason, Fickle and the team are getting ready to face bigger schools next season. Hard to believe, but only 16 days left until Bearcat baseball takes the field. The team made videos like these to show their fans the excitement for the upcoming season. Last year was Coach Gugan's first season at UC. They went 28 and 28. The Bearcats are set to open their season on February 15th at Florida Atlantic University. Well, guys, I know you said you haven't made it out to any basketball games, but come on. Who's excited for some Bearcat baseball? I definitely am. Dollar Dog Night? Diamond Dog there. Night. I I'll am there for that I'll one. be there. Right there. <laughs> Just include the food. Well, baseball season may be opening soon, but the government still is closed. And that shutdown has reached all the way to campus. We'll show you how right after the break. It's the longest federal government shutdown in American history. Peyton Marshall says it's impacting not only federal workers, but students right here on campus. It is day 33 of the government shutdown, and UC senior Kennedy Metcalf is getting worried. Metcalf's mother, Tracy, has worked as a human resource specialist for the U.S. Census Bureau for 30 years. Tracy goes to work every day, knowing she will return home without a paycheck. But she never showed that to our family or um, made us worry. She always um, kept it under wraps, the whole validity of the whole situation, instead of um, making us worry. Metcalf has a 14-year-old brother, and the entire family is living off their father, Percy's paycheck. A lot of people who don't work for the government or their families don't work for the government just watch this on television, but it's actually affecting everybody in this country. Adam Dottie understands all too well. The UC sophomore served four years active duty in the Air Force before coming to UC. Dottie relies on his monthly military paycheck. So like now, me and, and other people I know uh, have started doing side jobs like DoorDash or, or being Uber drivers to earn some extra money. Dottie and Metcalf say financial struggles remind them of what really matters. So I think we all need to kind of be in tune more with one another and put politics aside and just get back to real human decency. It's day 34. Trump has suspended the government shutdown, but students here on campus fear that if he shuts the government down again, they might not be able to afford to stay in school. For UC News, I'm Peyton Marshall. The government isn't the only thing shutting down. So is one building on campus. The university plans to demolish Crosley Tower. The building's been home to advanced biology and political science classrooms for decades. Students like Joey DeFrank say they have mixed feelings about the plans. I mean, I've spent a lot of time here, and our campus is great, you know, but Crosley Tower is just kind of like that one thing that doesn't belong, but I think that's why we kind of like it. The university says Crosley doesn't fit with the modern look UC wants. No word yet on when the building will come down. Medical marijuana became legal in Ohio last year, but users and sellers still find it hard to buy and sell. The state has been slow to approve growers and storefronts, so sales only started last month. And at the same time, the Cincinnati Health Department has been cracking down on CBD products in local grocery stores. CBD doesn't get people high, but many believe it has medical benefits. The health department has made merchants clear their shelves of CBD products. And then there are e-cigarettes. Six months after the Food and Drug Administration started regulating them, Students say prices have gone up dramatically for Juul and other brands. Ben Ship says it's making some students reconsider the habit. Xander Barnard started smoking cigarettes as a teen. Last year, he switched to smoking a Juul. He saw it as a way to kick the habit. I started smoking Juul because I was a smoker for a long time. It was actually a lot easier. To, and healthier to smoke a jewel. Plus, I mean, smoking indoors is in a lot, of, a lot of places. There's just a whole thing around it. So, jeweling was the best option. Um, but more recently, it's been kind of harder to, to come by. We've got a lot of government 
stepping in and trying to make it harder to get jewels. So it's been a lot easier for me to just go back to smoking cigarettes. The FDA first started regulating jewel in September. The company had to submit a plan to prevent young people from vaping. In November, the FDA said the company's plan hadn't done enough. So it brought on more regulations. This also forced Jewel to stop posting on all social media. It also forced the company to pull all sweet flavored pot in 90,000 stores in the nation. Uh, flavor wise, I used to smoke mango and some of the fruitier flavors, but it's become a lot harder to find. Um, it's not available anywhere near me. And if you do happen to find it, it's like 40 something miles away and it's like $25 for a pack of four, which is ridiculous. Barnard says he doesn't blame local stores for the rising prices, but he is questioning if the smoking alternative is worth the effect on his wallet. You know, maybe with these prices going up, it will stop students because there is nicotine in these products. Right, you know, um, and I think uh, the university as well is taking a great step in making it a, a tobacco-free VC. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people who... Uh, it's more, uh, I think it, it takes a community. You know, it's not about people enforcing it, but it's about your peers enforcing it. Exactly. I think that's really important. And speaking of our peers, coming up, find out how a DAP student is making history at the Cincinnati Contemporary Arts Center. And another student has revolutionized the pizza pickup process. Both stories when we return. The popular pizza chain, Little Caesars, is about to get more convenient for customers. And it's all thanks to the work of a current University of Cincinnati student. UC student Maggie Otten worked on this invitation while on co-op with Apex Supply Chain Solutions. The new pizza portal is a self-service station that allows Little Caesars customers to get their orders without the hassle of waiting in line. A lot of college students, they really want to be like quickly because, you know, when you're on the go, you only have a short amount of time, you need things fast. So it's really nice to be able to just like go into Little Caesars and be like, hey, pizza's ready, like already. Little Caesars plans to launch the stations at some of the chain's restaurants later this year. UC students and alumni are celebrating this year. It's the school's 200th birthday. The university is holding all kinds of events all year for Bearcats to enjoy the bicentennial. You can find out what's happening on UC's website. A UC DAP student is giving another reason to celebrate. She's showing off her talents after winning the chance of a lifetime. Every creative mind is different, but we never expect to see someone so young as an accomplished artist. McCartney Greer is studying fine arts at the University of Cincinnati. She's shown her work all around town, but now has an opportunity to exhibit her art at the Contemporary Arts Center. It's a rare feat for someone so young, but you wouldn't know that listening to her. That's really hard, because like, I, I am always my worst critic, so everything I make, it's like always like, that could be better. McCartney is always working on her craft. For her exhibit, Pity Party, in the CAC, she wanted her piece to involve everyone and attract patrons of all ages to come participate in the exhibit. I think it's really hard to pick a favorite, but I would have to say, like, my favorite that I have been doing are the pity parties, um, just because I get to relate to other people and talk to other people and just, like, hear just really different perspectives, and it's not just, like, me, myself, and I. Those viewing her work also have their favorites. McCartney sees her work as a reflection of herself, but now she gets to see how pity party is an opportunity for others to reflect on themselves and come together. For UC News, I'm Connor Sweeney. She's a very talented artist. She really is. And she's honestly nice as can be. I just feel like every student who comes out of the STAT program just is so successful right out of it. I don't know what they're doing there, but they're doing something right. Yeah, they have a lot of talent. Well, that does it for this edition of UC News. I'm Peyton Marshall. And I'm Connor Sweeney. Have a great night.